Hi everyone. One thing I've really been wanting to cover for a while is multiple start threads and the different ways that you can cut them. First, let's talk about what they are and why they're used. At its simplest, a multi-start thread consists of two or more threads that are intertwined. They're used in applications where movement speed is much more important than holding power. You can often find them being used for lead screws for machinery because they allow for higher feed rates, especially rapid traverse times. They're also commonly used on valve stems for plumbing and pipe fitting so the valve can be shut quickly. I absolutely guarantee that most of you have encountered a multi-start thread today. That's because they are extensively used in plastic bottling to speed up the packaging process. Let's look at some basic principles behind cutting them and then I'll show you three different ways to do the job. First, you'll need to set up the machine for the number of starts and the desired thread pitch. For example, if you want one millimeter pitch but three starts, you'll need to have the lathe set for three millimeter pitch instead to accommodate the three different threads. In Imperial, your TPI setting, or threads per inch, will need to be divisible by the number of starts. In my examples, I'm going to be cutting 1 inch 12 threads with two starts, so I'll actually need to have the gearing set to 6 TPI instead of 12. If I wanted three starts, I'd need to have the lathe geared for 4 TPI. Once you have that set, you just cut the thread like you normally would for the thread specification. In the end, the thread's going to look exactly like a regular single start 1 inch 12 thread, except you'll have two threads starting 180 degrees away from each other. There are some other very important things to consider. Most importantly, the mating thread needs to have the same number of starts or it won't go together. Also, with a higher number of starts, the angle formed by the thread will start to get steeper and steeper. So you'll need to give the cutting tool more relief on the leading edge if you want to cut a large number of starts. Three or four starts seems to work fine for most threading tools, but the angle of the thread also depends on the pitch, the distance from point to point, and the diameter of the thread, so it's hard to make sweeping generalizations. A coarse pitch on a smaller diameter will have a much steeper angle than a fine thread on a large diameter. If you're unsure whether the tool has enough clearance, you'll be able to tell pretty easily by the shredded, galled surface finish on the thread and the rapidly disintegrating tool. I'd like to take a moment to welcome my newest patron from Patreon, Todd Barrett. Howdy, Todd. If you like the content that I create and want to help support the channel like Todd does, head on over to my Patreon page. The link is down in the description. While you're down there, help feed the algorithm by hitting that like and subscribe button. It really does help the channel. The first method for cutting multi-start threads I'd like to talk about is the threading dial method. How this works depends on what your threading dial looks like and the gearing and pitch of the lead screw. Quite a lot of threading dials look like this, with four numbered marks and four half marks. These half marks can be used for cutting double start threads by cutting one of the threads at the numbers and one at the half marks. This doesn't work for every gear setting though, so you have to take a look at the chart on the threading dial that shows where each thread can be engaged. Some gear settings like 8 TPI can be engaged at any mark on the dial, so engaging at the half marks will just follow the first thread. Other settings, like the 6 TPI we want to use, can only be engaged at every other numbered line. In these cases, I can actually cut four starts with the dial, one at the odd numbers, one at the evens, and one each at the corresponding half marks. You can also engage the half nuts in between marks, but this can be unreliable. Every lathe is different, of course. Threading dials vary greatly, and some lathes don't even have them. This method should be possible on any machine equipped with a threading dial. You'll just have to learn your machine and its particular quirks in order to employ it. The big advantage to using this method is you can cut both threads without changing anything in the setup. This makes measuring the thread considerably easier. I'll get into that more at the end of the video though.
There we are, we've got a cut right in the middle. Next up is the compound method. This is a very reliable technique and you can easily cut any number of starts as long as the gearing allows it. The compound needs to be set parallel to the lathe axis for this and the thread is cut exclusively with the crossfeed. Once the first thread is cut to depth, the compound is fed toward the headstock by the pitch of the thread and the next thread is cut. The process would be repeated for every start. It's very important to make sure the backlash is taken out of the compound before you start. It needs to be loaded toward the headstock or the force of the cut will push it back. You might also prefer to use a dial indicator rather than the machine dial for the feed. This tends to be clearer than using the machine dials and you can re-zero the dial without the risk of moving the tool. Let's talk about the gear method. This method uses the gear on the spindle to index over to the next thread. To do this, you would cut the first thread as you would normally. Once it's done, you open the end cover for your machine to access the gears. Mark which gear teeth are meshed between the spindle and the mating gear. Now you can disengage the gear train and rotate the spindle to a new gear tooth for the next thread. This spindle gear has 40 teeth, so if I want to cut a double start thread, I would need to move the spindle 20 teeth around the gear, starting with the tooth next to the one that's marked. Then re-engage the gear train, making sure your new gear tooth is aligned with the mark you made on the mating gear. The advantage to this method is you can very easily cut any number of starts that are a factor of the number of teeth on your gear. In this case, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, and 20 starts. The disadvantage is this is by far the easiest method to mess up. If you're off by a gear tooth, your threads will not be spaced correctly. You can do a quick idiot check by making sure you have the same number of teeth between the starting tooth and the second tooth as you do between the second tooth back around to the beginning. If you're cutting more than two starts, you could mark out which teeth you'll use beforehand, but you need to make sure that each of those teeth starts out meshed with the same spot on the mating gear or the thread spacing will be off. You can use any of these techniques to cut internal threads as well. As I mentioned before, the mating part will need to have the same number of starts or the two pieces will not go together. Of course, both threads will need to be cut before you can start testing the fit, so I really like the thread dial method for this.
Real quick note about the technique here. What I'm doing is cutting a pass at one depth for the first thread and then a pass at the exact same depth for the second thread. So I'm actually cutting them both at the exact same time. That keeps the pass depths the exact same and when I get all the way through I can look right here for when my boring bar exits the back of the hole and then I'll use my digital readout to make sure that I extract it far enough so that I don't drag my cutting tool against the threads that I've just cut. I'm also going to be checking this after every single pass now that I'm starting to get close. As far as my depth goes, when I originally zeroed on the bore of this, I knew what size the bore was, so I just typed that number into my digital readout, and I started checking maybe around uh, 998 thousandths of an inch uh, as far as where that the tip of the tool is. Right now, that last pass was at one inch and four thousandths, uh, so I should be actually getting a fit pretty soon, probably in the next three or four passes. Woohoo! Let's talk about measuring multi-start threads. The usual methods of measuring threads using three wires or thread micrometers can work just fine, but using them can be tricky and you may run into some issues. First of all, before you can use a thread mic, all the starts would need to be cut. That's inconvenient since you have to change the setup between threads using the compound and the gear methods, and it's not easy to go back. Thread wires work up to a point, but with larger numbers of starts, there can be a large gap in between the thread and that's hard to bridge with a standard micrometer. Ideally, you want to be checking the dimensions of the thread while you're cutting instead of after the fact. At 12 TPI, the three-wire method still works, but just barely. Anything coarser than that and the gap will be too wide. A disc micrometer is a decent option since the wider face bridges that gap. That lets you use the three-wire method just as you normally would. However, disc micrometers are expensive, and not many people, myself included, have them just lying around. Also, if you have a high number of starts, then you run into the same gap problem as a regular micrometer. An easy and cheap option is a comparison measurement. This entails measuring a known good thread and shooting for that same measurement on your piece. You can actually do this with just a single wire by taking the measurement from the top of the wire to the diameter of the part. The wire doesn't need to be a thread wire from the set. It could be a gauge pin, dowel pin, a piece of suitably sized round stock, a drill bit shank, heck, it could be a nail you found on the floor as long as it's not too rusty or bent. As long as it fits into the thread but still protrudes over the major diameter, it'll work. Ideally, your known thread would be a plug gauge, so you have a range of acceptable measurements. But you can also just use an existing thread that meets the specs if you're not too concerned about the tolerances. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to see me cover in a future video, leave those down in the comments section. Hit the like and subscribe buttons if you think I've earned them, and please consider supporting the channel over on Patreon like these awesome folks right here. You may also want to check out these other videos. On the right, I have my ever-growing playlist of quick machining tips just like this one. On the top left, I have my most recent video, and on the bottom left, I have a video that YouTube thinks is right for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.